All right, everybody. I am so happy to see everybody here today. Today is actually uh, really important because I have some good news. For the first time, we are not having a conversation about a downturn market in a long time. Uh, in my bird's eye view, and if you uh, haven't um, seen it yourself, it's coming. Um, definitely across the country. Unlimited Inc. has a really great view, which is the signing agency I own outside of Notary Stars here. Uh, we have a great view of all 50 states, what's going on, and we are starting to see upticks in files. We started seeing it last month. We've definitely seen it this month, and we have projections from our clients from last month, and every single one of them are like, hey, more business is coming, more business is coming. That's really great news for uh, all of us you know, across the country, not just for Unlimited Inc., but for all of you who are out there that are looking for business. Today is an important conversation because I have, and it's not just Unlimited Inc. What I feel I see going on in the industry right now is that notaries kind of took a little break or weren't really exercising those brain muscles, you know, for different file types for the last few months, you know, or six months. And there are more errors coming out. You can see Amrock sending out uh, notifications, Signature Sync is sending out notifications, Mortgage Connect is sending out, sending out notifications. We don't really send them out from Unlimited Inc. because we trust our notary stars who train with us uh, to stay on point. And a lot of you do come in and I call when I was signing orders and I can hear myself in the background or hear Beth in the background and we know you guys are out there training. But it's important for us to all kind of come together and. You know, this general mentorship is open up to all levels of notary stars and friends of notary stars. You can invite friends. Feel free to forward the link to say someone get in here right now if you got a good friend out there that's not a part of our platform. Because we're going to go over some things today that I think are really important. And those things are the 20 most common mistakes that notaries make when doing their signing. Now, there won't be a screen share through this. It's going to be a talking uh, session and I'm going to go through this pretty fast. We do have this available for all of our notary stars um, on the on on their in the notary star or notary star plus marketing journey. But if you are not a part of that level, please take notes. I will be posting at the end of this a downloadable takeaway that you can keep um, and put in your folders or in your knowledge so that you can study it. But I really want you to focus and let this kind of sink into your brain. Um, and then at the end of this, we will be uh, doing any Q&A over any of the things that we go over today. Uh, but I want to get started with this list right away. Just one last quick announcement. If you are not a notary star, um, this is the last week all month long. We have given 50% off. If you would like to join us at the notary star or the notary star plus marketing level, this is the very last week. We celebrated our fourth birthday or anniversary, however you want to call a company. Um, this year. So uh, we are about 10,000 notaries in, which is great. Uh, but if you haven't joined us at that level yet, and you really want to get your education on point before things really, really pick up, the code is happy birthday notary stars, all in caps, you can use it on upgrade and you can use it on, uh, on signing up for your first first time It is valid for your first month at 50% off and there is no contract. We'd love to have you there. Uh, but it, with that said, I'm going to start going through this list here of things that you kind of really need to be on point about. Some of them may be second nature to you, uh, but we are seeing a high volume um, at Unlimited Inc. And I'm reading the emails from all the companies that are out there. So one of the very first things on our most common mistakes to avoid is to always sign your name with comma notary public. And I hear this all the time. I've signed my name all the time and I don't write notary public after my name, uh, notary public after my name, and uh, it's never bitten me. Well, you never know what state your file is coming from, okay? A lot of times notaries don't even look at what their state's coming from. A lot of lenders do require that you write your title after you sign your name, um, and if it's not printed under the signature line to do that. If you get into the habit of it, it'll be the one file that you don't do that on that when you send it back, you'll have a busy day with five signings that you have to get it done for a funding that's going to really bite you. It's better to be in the habit. And if you are on a border state where people might be going back and forth or you're 
located in a state like Florida where there's a lot of transients and they may be signing for another property because they're at their investment property. It's just a good practice to be in. You can make up the excuses that you want to of why, but remember, I always try to teach the path of least resistance here at Notary Stars, meaning I play a little game with title and escrow going, they won't get me. They're not going to make me go back. I'm not going to burn gas to go back a second time. So <laughs> again, I always try to try to uh, teach the path of least resistance. The second thing that we see is that notaries must need to know uh, need to know the difference between an acknowledgement and a jurat and which one to attach. I'll, all notaries should be very comfortable with all purpose uh, acknowledgements and all purpose jurat jurats and know how to fill in that optional information. Um, one of the things that uh, I find that you'll get calls from title going, can you attach a jurat? Something was wrong. And notaries just provide them a jurat. And often, often that's a deed of trust, which is an acknowledgement. And you have to be able to guide your title companies and your, and your lenders when they ask you for an attachment, you need to be able to say, what document was it need to be attached to so I can go back and look at it and you need to be able to dictate to them, that's not a juret, that's an acknowledgement. I can't tell you how many times at Unlimited Inc. I got a call going, there's a mistake on this notary's you know, jurat. Can you have them upload a jurat? And we go and look at the documents and they're actually looking for an acknowledgement. A jurat is not an all purpose cure all. Um, you are only to attach the, the type of certificate that is supposed to be with a document. And your job as the notary is to guide your clients on well, that came with an acknowledgement, so I have to give you an acknowledgement if something went wrong. Never let title or a lawyer or a lender dictate what you are supposed to be knowing uh, how to do. Um, the next thing that I wanted to make sure to point out about certificates is to make sure that they're completed properly. I don't want to be, you know, and when I first started Notary Stars, I came in like guns blazing. And I said things kind of off the cuff and kind of rude, but now I've kind of calmed down over the four, last four years because of you guys and how wonderful you've been with me and let me be that way because I just wanted to save the world. Um, but I do want to say this, and I don't mean it without love, but I see a lot of lazy notaries out there that don't want to fill out their notarial certificates. They go, well, my commission's written in the stamp and or my commission expiration's written in my stamp. Why would I write it again? The answer is simple because it's there on the paper and it's calls for it. You don't get to dictate, you know, how a notarial certificate is filled out, um, you just fill it out. And I see notaries trying to, you know, get stamps and do all of these things. Um, what, how you try to fill out that certificate is up to you, but I see it all the time where they're incomplete and they do get rejections. And I will tell you, it just makes you look like you don't care. And if you were a title and escrow officer and you had to go back and fill in these things for notaries and look with them, you're probably not gonna hire that notary on the regular if they're not doing their entire job which is actually not that much to ask to fill out the notarial section. So you wanna do that for two reasons. Number one, to avoid an error. And number two, to kind of show your clients because all of you should be striving for direct client business, not just working for signing agencies. And when you go direct, you really wanna show them that you go the extra mile. Case in point, we had a notary today. She actually CC'd me on an email. I am sure it's because she did such a great job that the escrow officer asked her, you know, how can I get you for more work? And she actually CC'd me. So I would see it and said, hey, I do work direct, but I only, you know, if it came through Unlimited Inc., you'll have to hire me through that, which I really appreciate because our notaries are very local, uh, uh, loyal here in our local markets. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's because she did a wonderful job and filled out everything properly. Those notaries who go the extra mile to fill out those, those are the ones who really you know, are out there making the big bucks and do get direct business. The next thing that we see, and this is a, a common problem with notaries, and I'm not sure why it is, but you should only have a signer date documents that explicitly require a date. Um, I know for a lot of newer notaries, if you don't know, it can be I, I'm guilty, guilty as charged. Um, in the beginning, I had people sign things because I didn't know if it should be dated or not. Well, I want to use this as a great example. Most lenders will reject a note if it does not call to be dated, if you have the signer date the note. It's actually in their lender instructions that the note cannot be dated. I don't know why, I'm not a lender, uh, but I do know that I've seen this as a rejection quite often. 
So you should never have a signer data document that does not explicitly call for a date. And you should only, uh, you should never change pre-printed dates with it within in a document unless it's in your notarial certificate. Okay. Um, Ms. Beth, do you have anything to say on that? I just want to make sure that I'm reiterating that part correctly. You're on mute there, but. I'm just trying to be good. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't change a date even on a signature line um, unless you're doing a notarial certificate <laughs> and that signature date on a jurat has to match that jurat. If it's on an acknowledgement, yeah, you got to remember what an acknowledgement says. It doesn't say you signed it in my presence. It says you came before me on this date and told me you signed it, even though we know we see it signed uh, in front of us all the time. That's not what the certificate says to the receiving party. So there is a split there. If it's a giraffe, they have to sign on the date that matches what's in your certificate. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. Thank you, Miss Beth. Now, guys, there is a date that you want to be really aware of. And I will tell you, you will get more business if you are doing this. Um, this is not just a mistake to avoid. Um, this is something that can help you get more business. Before you print your documents, you should go to the note and the deed. You will save paper because most people won't pay you if you printed the documents and didn't check the note and the deed. You should check the date on the deed and the date on the note. Deeds and notes can generally be signed the day that they are issued or the day they're issued for or any day thereafter. However, okay, you most in most states you cannot pre sign documents because technically the documents don't exist yet, even though they made them up for a future date. A lot of times signers will go, Oh, can I sign early? And I get calls all the time, Can they sign early? No, because they're existing for a future date. Being able to check that, because sometimes lenders go so fast with title, they just marry their docs and they don't even realize if you catch it where they're not having to double bill their client or the signer who generally this, the signing fee is passed along to because it's on their settlement statement, you look like a hero. You look like the one that they should call again. And I know for a fact that there are notaries out in the world that will he he go sign those documents because they know they're going to get rejected and have to come back. You don't want to be that notary. You know, that's not the notary star way, and that shouldn't be the notary way. You should really look at that note and deed to save everybody some time and trouble. Um, and, and, you know, I'll say this probably more than once tonight, but Kyle and Escrow are really looking at you to be an extension of their desk. They need your eyes and ears and your knowledge and your help. And you don't want to have to go back to a signer knowing deep down in your heart that you knew that and that you didn't stop them from having to sign 200 pages again. Um, I am kind of on the fence about that one going forward. I mean, we've always said the date on the documents is not our business, um, but we've always for years had an issue with the deed because of the recorder's office. They're looking at the date that's on the face of the deed and we signed it two days before that date and they would reject it. However, I have to say that lenders more and more are putting the recording date on the deeds of trust. And technically, for us as just notaries, we're not concerned with that date. We shouldn't have to be. It's not our, it's not our deal. Right. As notaries, more. as notaries, we should not be, but as signing agents, which is our secondary hat. We are, yeah. we are trained to be working with title and escrow. So as a notary, if it's a general notary appointment, you have no concern with that. You have no title agency to answer to. But if you're working with title, you have to consider yourself an extension of their desk. And I say, before you print the documents, get a confirmation that they can be signed um, because it is a very common error that is that happens now. I That's the way we're kind of teaching it in class, too, is that you can't sign it with a date that's postdated or that's after the date that you're doing the signing. But if you see it, you should call and confirm. Just check. Is it okay with the lender? Is it okay with the recorder? 
that we sign this document, even though the deed of trust is dated for the date that it's actually going to be recorded rather than our signing date. Yeah, absolutely. And the note is also a good indication because it might the uh, it might be not match up. And if they don't match up, that's also another red flag. I always say, you know, if it's after the date, unless it's like two weeks or three weeks past that date, then you might want to call. It's probably okay. If it's before the date, always just make the call and make sure. If you don't reach anybody, proceed with your appointment because you you did your due diligence. But you do want a record that you asked before you went. Um, most of you will probably find that they won't let you sign them prior unless it's Quicken Loans because uh, or now Rocket Mortgage. I used to call it the Quicken Verse. Now it's the Rocket Mortgage Verse. They live in their own world, um, but you still want to get a confirmation from them. But they break a lot of the norm rules um, when it comes to to those things. The next thing that I want to talk about is notary stamps. Um, it blows my mind um, how many notaries we see that are running low on ink and we have to call them and remind them like, oh, you're going to have to restamp these documents. A couple of things on that note, your, no your notary stamp must be crystal clear. Do not over ink your stamp. Do not under ink your stamp. You want to have a nice dark, whatever color you have. Um, I prefer black and most people prefer a black notary stamp. Um, because number one, they're using the scans of your documents mostly anyway, and nobody knows what color it is. Um, that's usually for you and general notary work. But a nice, crisp, clear stamp where you can read all the letters and all the writing on it. If you over ink, you need to stamp, stamp, stamp a sheet of paper until it gets back to normal. But you don't want a gray or really light stamp because that generally won't pass recording, especially on recordable documents uh, like a deed of trust. You really want that nice and crisp, crystal clear notary stamp. Now, if you, we've all done it where we stamped and it only came out half a stamp or upside down or what have you. And when you make a misstamp on a document, you're going to want to put one line through it, initial it, and then restamp the document. And then uh, just for adding into that, uh, you always want to have your signers and you within one inch border of the document, um, you'll see that there's a nice white border on most loan documents. You wanna stay within that border as best you can. And here's why, because when they're uploading to like a county recorder or if they have to doctor the, doc doctor the document, they're gonna blow that document up a little bit and they need that one inch border. And if it cuts off your stamp or a signer signature or your signature, it's going to cause that to get rejected as well. So you want to make sure you follow those guidelines. Amy Seitz, you had your hand up there for a second. Thank you. I have a question mm -hmm. on that subject. I saw in a group where someone was saying, Peter, your stamp around the flag of Texas, and it actually had like multiple colors and all of these different schemes. Would you recommend that? Because it looked weird to me. No, um, I don't know where that come from. You know, I have seen that black stamps generally do. I've seen every color. I've seen like pink, blue all of these different colors and you know i get it like especially if you're a newer notary like it looks cool the the dark blues and the blacks are the best uh notary stamps black is what most people want um catering to a, are, are you saying they're ca ca catering to like a texas flag you gotta stay off mute there you go i know sorry can i share my screen i'll show you one sure Uh, let me share. It's under security. Um, allow share screen. Yeah, there you go. Got it. Cool. This is the stamp that they're recommending for Texas. Who's recommending? Um, some somebody uh, notary now, twenty twenty. Um, I don't know. I thought it looked really different, but not just that stamp. He he has like the, all different kinds, like 
crazy different designs. And well, I thought it was out there. Honestly, you know, and I'm not talking about about this person because I don't know them, um, but it looks like that's Facebook and I would go by what my secretary of state said. So no, I would not jump on that in any way, shape or form. That doesn't even look like a traditional notary stamp. And you also have to make sure that that's a licensed, you know, person to create notary stamps. The only place I buy my notary stamp from is the National Notary Association because they work with every single secretary of state and they get the parameters of what needs to be, uh, what your stamp needs to look like. I just wanted to bring that up only because it was something new and different and you were talking about stamps and I thought I wanted your opinion on that. Yeah, thank you thank for bringing you. that up. Thank you. All right, so moving along, because I want to make sure we get through uh, all of these uh, um, these hidden points here. I see newer notaries and existing notaries stamping documents that do not have notarial language. Okay, as a notary and a loan signing agent, you need to be able to identify a notarial certificate and when it's attached to a document or at the end of a document. Um, that is just you have to you cannot stamp documents that do not have notarial language one of the biggest ones we see getting stamped is the patriot act form there is no notarial certificate attached to this and also i just want to point out when you sign the patriot act form they do want your job title um, i've been misquoted on this before they want your job title um, but i i personally and you you can put notary public when they ask for your title i put notary public and signing agent just because I'm so always sign my name with notary public. So that is actually not a notar notarized document. So I put notary public and signing agent on the job title because they're always gonna wanna see notary public as that capacity. But that document is not stamped. Just because you're signing it does not mean that it's, it's stamped. Another one that you will see a lot of times is a signer's identity verification forms that calls for the notary to stamp often it is perfectly acceptable for you to write your notary information on there and a little message that says, I am not allowed to stamp documents, you know, if it's not a notarial section or a notarized document, that's, I used to draw a little box and just put in the information. That's never gotten anything back from me, but don't stamp documents, even if they call for it. A long time ago, they used to get a lot of notaries to do that, uh, but it's, you can't stamp documents that don't actually have a notarial certificate on it. Miss Nancy, do you mind wait until we get to the end of this? Because I want to get through this list because uh, we have we're about almost halfway through it. And I want to get through everything on there. Um, another thing that we see um, at, at and, and I want to make sure that this is clear. OK, um, and by the way, guys, if you have questions going along, make sure to raise your hand because we will get to those after this is done. Another thing that we see is and I want to make sure this is clear. If you can read a signer's signature and it's clear and legible, then they have to sign exactly as the signature line reads. So let's say John S. Doe, you can read that signature clearly. And he says, well, I never signed with the S. This time he does because you can read a signature. But let's say it's like a squiggly line and you can't, nobody can read it. Things sign however they want to because that's their signature as long as they can replicate it. The way I personally sit down with a signer at the very beginning of a signing is I have them sign my journal first so I can see what their signature looks like and then I have that conversation. Can you replicate that signature over and over again? If they can, no problem. If I can read it, I tell them, let me instruct you as I go through the signing because sometimes you'll see it with the middle initial, without the middle initial. Sometimes they have to spell out their middle name and it'll all be in the same loan package. However, it's listed on that individual document is how they sign. And as a signing agent, you need to instruct them. So when you lay down that paper, you say you sign with John S. Doe, John Senior Doe, however it states. So that's when you turn that paper around. That's what you're saying. Now, for initials, um, when you have an, uh, a, a document that calls for initials, let's just say they're listed as John S. Doe and they initial JD, that's incorrect, okay? They have to initial with all the, the letters of each name that is shown on that document. 
All right, the next thing that I want to, um, to point out is also about the Patriot Act form. Um, I teach at Notary Stars, and I know, I know Ms. Beth probably does the same thing, but when I was doing boot camps, I always taught the notaries. The very first thing I do on a Patriot Act form is I go to where it says at the top how many IDs they need, and I circle it right there at the table, because you won't get in trouble for circling that or underlining it. I want people to know I read that, first of all, and I want to remind myself how many IDs I need to take. There is no if, ands, or buts around it. If the lender requires two forms of IDs, you must give them two forms of IDs, which also brings me to another point, uh, two other points. Number one, if you are given a military ID, you can take it for the Patriot Act form. However, you cannot photocopy it. So if they need to photo, uh, photocopy of it, they cannot use a military ID unless the lender approves that, okay? It is, it is illegal to photograph a military ID. You can still use one for notarization, but if they need a copy of it, might not be a viable solution, okay? Um, the next thing is, is that I want you guys to understand it is up to you to know your state laws on credible witnesses. Um, you, sh you can proceed with a lot of signings if they don't have identification, if you're in a state that allows it. Some states, it's just impossible. Like Washington, you have to know the notary and the, 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 the credible witness has to know the notary and the signer. That's just just never gonna happen. I mean, you would, you know, if you if that happens, play the lottery that day, because it's probably good, you're probably gonna win. But in Arizona, you just need a credible witness who knows the signer and it will swear to you that they know them. We prefer we have a what we call a credible witness affidavit that they'll fill out that which we adapted from Fidelity's um at unlimited ink we adapted it from fidelity's wishes because they're kind of like the underwriter for everyone and we give it to our clients and say this will be the form that we'll use and we've only had one come back and say we want to use our own which was the exact same document they just put their branding on it um but it's neither here nor there um but some states require an affidavit or don't require but it's better for you to have an affidavit when you give that sworn statement um so just make sure you know your state's laws uh, when 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 you're doing uh, outside the, those types of things. Another thing that we see is the notary blocks are not getting changed to reflect where the notarization's actually happening. Uh, the county and state venues are extremely important for you to record where that notarization is taking place. If you're in like a tri-county area, which I've lived in before, can get a little confusing and daunting. And there have been times where I've thought, do they really know what county this will be? That's neither here nor there. You want to make sure. So if you're in like a tri-county area or a, a, a dual county area, I usually say, what county are we in right now? You know, I don't go by, I go by what the signers say, because then I have a record of them saying we're in this county and they, they will remember when you ask what county you are in. You know, if you're in the middle of Maricopa, it could take an hour to get out of either side of it. Uh, or some counties, you may never get out like you can drive forever and never get out of it. Maricopa. Yeah, Maricopa. Um, so, you know, when I lived in Los Angeles County, it was pretty hard to get over to another county. I mean, I had to drive an hour to get to Ventura, but that was because of traffic. But I always say, if you live in the center of a county, if you drive, you know, more than 30, 40 minutes, you should ask, am I still in Maricopa County? So that you can record where your feet are planted when that notarization is happening. And that comes to your protection. Mm -hmm. Also, when you get documents from another state and they already have like, you know, let's say I sign in Arizona and it says, you know, state of Ohio, county of, you know, I don't know any counties there off the top of my head, but county of, you know, Starsville, um, it's my duty as a notary to change those and reflect where it's happening. And they know when it comes back, you didn't do that. They need you to put one line through it, initial it with your initials and change it. Okay, that is your duty as a notary to change your notarial certificates to reflect where it's taking place. That also protects you, you know, in a lot of ways, if that ever goes to court for any reason, that you do everything on that notarial certificate that you're supposed to do. Um, another thing that we put in these in this list, and by the way, I'm going to give this list to everybody. You should always check what color ink your document should be signed in. Now, there are certain states, I believe, that say has to be black ink or blue ink. 
um, if you're signing, but you never, if, if the signing is taking place for a property outside of your state, you probably need to check what color they prefer. And I've made that mistake actually as a notary before where I only had black pens because that's all I thought I needed. Oh, the signings I went back to because I, I made that mistake. Um, by the way, I see somebody I haven't seen in a really long time, Leah Salsi, I, I, hi, you're one of the originals. I'm so happy to see you here. Um, so you wanna make sure that you check your color ink uh, you know, usually it should be in your notary instructions. If it's from your state, you know what's what color it's supposed to be. You don't need to call title and ask them or your signing service. But if it's outside of your normal where you would receive files from um, and you you don't know, it is OK to ask what color ink should this be in. Again, it's the path of least resistance, right? We just want to do a good job. We don't want to have to do it twice. We don't want the signers to have to do it twice. And if they forgot to put that in there, then you look like a hero for reminding them. You know, you want to be an extension of your escrow officer's desk. And again, you also want to go through your assigning parties, but you want to be an extension of whoever you're working with. Um, which brings me to another point. You should always over communicate with your assigning party on the status of your order. Um, guilty as charged, okay? Until I owned a signing agency, I did not understand how important this was. Okay, and I'm going to tell you now I wish I could go back and apologize to a lot of people. And if you get to that level, you will too. When you're when an escrow officer puts in an order at unlimited ink, it takes us about an hour to sign a notary or less. Um, if it goes out in one of our saturated markets with white glove notaries, then it goes pretty quick. Um, in other areas, we have to read their profiles, check their credentials. Um, check their training, all of those things. When you get the order, it's already an hour in. If it's for the next day, you know, business etiquette at Unlimited Inc. and most signing agencies is you can confirm an appointment between eight and eight. We know that you're on the road, but you may want to send a message. I'm on the road. I'm going to open the order at this time. Let your assigning party know like, hey, I'm going to confirm this order because they're sitting there watching and the escrow officer that hires the signing agency or you is now watching to see if you've even opened the order and on signing order it shows us a little eyeball if you view it then it sends you know when you put in that confirmation it says left voicemail or confirmed or whatever and all an escrow officer wants to know is that her order or his order is confirmed it is so important for them to get that order confirmed and when they start seeing notaries i just added a notary here today um i don't know if they're here tonight or not you can raise your hand but i i there was a guy named ian in florida He's done over 500 orders on signing order. We've worked with him like five times and, you know, we took over this large account and they were like, we have to have this notary. He does a wonderful job of everything. And when I was talking to him and I was like, wow, you're going to fit in here really well. Um, so all of those things will help you get business. It's not just a part of not making mistakes. It's a part of fitting into this industry where you are going to get more business, where people are going to recognize you because if you do these things, you're going to be doing better than a lot of the notaries who don't. And believe me, if you're here today, I'm not as worried about you as those that are. And, and I don't mean those that uh, have a signing right now and are going to watch the replay because I know a lot of people watch the replays. I mean, those who just don't care, like they don't care to better their craft. They don't care to train. They don't care to exercise that brain muscle of what the rest of the world is thinking. Um, I'm less worried about you guys that are here or watching the replay, but it, it is part of the process, you know, confirming those orders, letting them know when you're finished, when your scans will be back. Let, and even if they're not responding, they're getting the messages. Okay. They may be so busy that they can't respond to everything. And unlike Unlimited Inc., which has over 30 employees working here, a lot of signing agencies are only ran by three or four people. They're doing the same volume but paying a lot less people and you want to help them out because they went out and got that business for you you know you want to help them and then title and escrow they're working on their volume so they may be just hoping you're going to do the right job and just need one little one little message that says everything's good i'm on the right track that's all they need okay <clears throat> uh <clears throat> we we 
kind of went over the note and the, the deed, but here's something else that you should triple check. This is something that can get you, and I talked about this in training. Every settlement statement, every note, and every deed, you should really inspect the bottom to make sure there are no initial marks. Seems so simple that they'll make them blatant, but I have seen them with like a thumbnail of the edge of the document where it, you can barely tell, and I've missed them myself. This is why I teach this, because I've been back to way too many signings where I missed the initials going, really? Really? You want to put it that small? <laughs> and it <laughs> took you off. So now I actually look at them through like a magnifying glass um, because you want to make sure. And remember, the game is they won't get me. I'm going to help them, but they're not going to get me. Um, so you want to inspect your settlement statements, notes, and deeds. For those of you that work at Fidelity, every Fidelity settlement statement is initial. I've never seen one that's not. It's got four marks across the bottom, not marked as initial marks. Those are places for up to four signers. You only need to use one, but you want to inspect your settlement statement, deed, and note. Um, and, you know, I teach this at Notary Stars as well, but you want to make sure you inspect that really clearly. It's a big mistake to miss initials um, on, a, on a document. Uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is, and we have loan application training at Notary Stars, but you do want to get comfortable. There's no straightforward way to teach the loan applications right now. Okay, does everybody, anybody disagree with me on that? Every lender seems to be having their own little, if I'm applying joint credit or not applying for joint credit, you have to inspect that section and look and see what they want. Okay, that is a big mistake that comes back quite often um, on loan applications at Unlimited Inc. And I've seen it from at least two other signing agencies about inspecting that. You know it's there and you know it, you have to look and think. There are certain moments during a signing. I'm guilty of trying to get through that signing fast too, right? We got to get on the road. We got to make more money. I get it. I really get it. But this is these points are things that you should think for like 40 seconds longer, 30 seconds longer, just to make your brain go, ah, loan application, something could go wrong. You know, deed of trust, something could go wrong. You know, just that extra 30 seconds will save you a lot of time and pain and also help you build your reputation. Um, let's see, the next thing is that we see a lot, this happens every day. <laughs> Letters of explanation. Um, they come in many shapes and forms. And if you don't know, the rule is to sign it. A letter of explanation is a letter that someone types out. Sometimes it doesn't even have a signature line on it. It just says, you know, there was, $40,000 deposited in my account, and that was a gift from my uncle so I could buy a home. Or I worked for this place from this place to this date to this date, and you know, then I went self-employed. Those letters are meant to be signed, and they're usually at the very end of a package where the lender pushes them into the file because they're not a part of a traditional loan package. So it's actually just injected into their file. Those have to be signed every single time whether there's a signature line or not. And my rule of thumb is if when in doubt, have them sign it, not initial, sign it because they need it. So if you follow that rule of them, when in doubt, have them sign it, you won't get in trouble because guess what? They can just have it reprinted. You know, if they don't, if they didn't want a signature on it, just reprint. It's beautiful, beautiful thing about technology. Um, the hard part is taking away something when it shouldn't be done. Uh, the easy part is just reprinting if you, if you can. All right, uh, next thing is, and this one's a big one because we we really, Travis worries about this every time we sign a refi right now, okay? Because everyone is really out of practice with refis. Most of you are probably doing purchases and sales at the moment. Um, very few refis, but they are starting to work their way back into files and interest rates are gonna come down. So you want to make sure you understand the right to cancel, okay? And I'm gonna read this off um, pretty much verbatim, and you guys know I don't like to use notes. I like to talk off the cuff, but this is really important. You should always, always, always use the National Notary Association's rescission calendar. If for only the fact that it's free, do not use any, even if Notary Stars brands one, do not use it, okay? Do not use anyone's rescission calendar. I have seen so many over the years that people make them because they wanna get 
things and then they're wrong or they mistype one date, the National Notary Association, that's a big deal to them. Okay, so you need to use theirs. Now we link it off of Notary Stars and in our app, so it's part of your little uh, Swiss Army Knight uh, application, but only the NNA's rescission calendar. Here's a couple of things to think about when you're doing your right to cancels. If the dates are pre-printed, you must inspect that they are correct. If they are not correct, the signer must put one line through them, initial, and change them per the dates you give them from the National Notary Association's rescission calendar, and it must be in their handwriting, okay? They have to be the ones who write those dates on there, not you, okay? They're the ones who have to change that form. Remember, we are only responsible for our notarial sections. We never change dates on documents. It could be said upon you that you change the dates later. And you don't want that to happen if something goes wrong with a transaction, because if an attorney ever wants to correct something, they're going to look for any way out of something that they possibly can. Okay, so don't put yourself in past harm by putting in dates for people. If the dates are not written on the right of cancel, you must have the signer write them in per the NNA's rescission calendar. You can write them in for them. If they are handwritten in on a blank document, the signers must initial them. Even if there's no initial marks, you must have them initial them because guess what? They're changing the form. You want them to initial, I'm the one who put this date here. Um, Sometimes title agencies or lenders will add these little circle things, and sometimes you can't read the initial because it's so small. If you see the little circles out beside the clear dates, that means they want the signer's initials there. Some escrow officers will actually stamp them before they scan them over to you to make sure you're aware, but if you see those little circles, it means that they should initial. The only time the signer does not initial uh, uh, the right of precision is if the pre-printed dates are typed in for them, and that nothing needs to be changed. Okay. Sometimes there'll be an initial mark out beside even the pre-printed dates, but if there's not one and there's no circle around it and it's correct, they don't need to initial it. Okay. Then it's just sign in the correct place. All right. Another big thing, and I, I, I we have power of attorney training on Notary Stars. <clears throat> if you do not understand how to execute power of attorney documents, do not do it you will make a mistake. It's not that complicated, but I see 99.9% .9 of power of attorney documents being returned because a couple of things. And this is a good point to remind you guys, and I wanna make sure that I'm like really hitting home with the, the looking in the eyes here. You will go to a signing and signers will tell you, well, I've been signing power of attorney for this person and it's always been this way. But it wasn't a home loan, which title means everything. They might have signed a bank form or something and they didn't care. They could have signed, you know, John Doe power of attorney for or AIF or whatever and gotten away with it. But this is a home loan, which title searches are a big deal and it has to be written a certain way. So you want to go by the instruction, you want to go by the rule of thumb is that they sign that line as power of attorney exactly as it is listed on the document verbatim. If they initial, then they initial pretty much verbatim, but only using the initials that they're given. We have great power of attorney training on notary stars. If you don't know how to, to do that, please join us for at least one month and then cancel just to get that. You want to save yourself a heartache. I see 99.9% .9 of power of attorney signings being returned at Unlimited Inc. So if it's happening that much with us, and we actually put an entire sheet of paper in there showing you how to sign with, it's like a, a whole instruction when we have a power of attorney signing, showing you notaries exactly how to do it, and still they get messed up. They're not complicated, but I get nervous when I do them myself, but I've done them successfully, so which means... If I can do it, anybody could do it. Because believe me, I know a lot of people look up to me, but I am not the smartest light on the Christmas, the brightest light on the Christmas tree. I just happen to light up. I've made that very clear from the beginning. But you, you want to make sure that you get that, that additional training on power of attorney signing for loan documents from somewhere, and make sure that it's a good reputable source. Um, it, it, you, you know how to do a good power of attorney. That is a really good end with an escrow officer.
okay? Because they, they don't understand what we do sometimes. They don't understand how complicated it is. They just know a lot of notaries mess up, right? Like that's all they know. They don't, they're not sitting here tonight watching us and knowing that we all learn and train and have been trying to claw our way to success for the last 20 years. Um, they're not gonna teach us these things. So if you wanna make sure that you know those things. Um, we're almost done. We've got about two more points and then I just have uh, a few things to say and then we'll answer any questions that you may have. Um, knowing how to sign trust documents is really important because we have a lot of trust signings and oftentimes title doesn't provide the notary instructions uh, and expects the notary to understand how to sign trust documents. One of the things that we teach at Notary Stars is you should know how to go to the lender's instructions. And generally in the lender's instructions, it will tell you, can you sign with trustee or not with trustee? And if it's not in the lender's instructions, you have to ask. If you don't reach anyone, the rule of thumb is to just have them sign their name. You know why? It is a lot easier to have them go back and write trustee after their name than it is to go back and have them remove trustee because that means you're doing a full re-sign, okay? Um, so just remember that. Now, another thing that I see notaries mess up on is when it says individually and as trustee, that means they only sign their name. If you see individually and as trustee, only sign their name. Because if they sign with comma trustee or individually and as trustee, they're canceling out the individually part. So you can't have that both ways. So it's just sign their name on that line, okay? If you follow that, you'll never make, mess one of those up because you cannot sign anything when it says individually and as trustee, okay? Um, now, the last point I'll make, and then there's two little, like, I hope this helps you kind of, kind of things. Knowing how to properly use your scanning equipment is ever more important nowadays than ever okay this is not an unlimited ink thing this is just a 2023 thing you know i know notaries don't want to carry around extra equipment i don't either but we're we chose this industry and having a mobile printer and a mobile scanner and knowing how to use it and knowing how to use our office equipment is really important not knowing how to properly scan a file into one single pdf and upload it to a portal with a reasonable size, you know, generally around 10 megabytes or less. When a note, when an escrow officer who barely knows how to use the computer as well has to go through and fix your work, you're ruining her day. She does not want to use you again. Same thing with a signing agency. About 70% of the files that we do at Unlimited Inc., we have to merge them for the notary and we have to uh, go through and do the quality control and upload them to a portal so that they can make it to the lender because when the file is too big it can't be uploaded to the portal because they block it at 25 megabytes so if it, we, in a file on adobe can only be reduced so many times so i think it's like three maybe four depends on how far the large is if you scan at 250 megabytes there's no way i can get it down to eight megabytes to get it over to the lender so you have to know how to use your equipment scan properly scan crystal clear check your equipment it's just a part of the job, you know, and we can listen to the Facebook university and say, I never do scan backs. They're lying. I work with those people. I go look them up. I really do. All those people that say, I don't do scan backs. Yes, they do. They've worked for me and done them. It, 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 it don't let that stuff get in your head. The people who are successful are doing scan backs. They're doing this job the way that, you know, that thing. It, and believe me, I hate them. I had to scan three sheets of paper today over to uh, somebody to get paid on a file for unlimited ink and I the scanner is right there and I promote this thing and I love it, but it's just war extra work. I'm like can't I just e sign this <laughs> like I get it, you know, but I, I, I don't want you to say think I say these things and don't feel the same way you do, but I've had to put that part of me aside to build a company and. You know, unfortunately, not everything we do, we're going to like. Um, so just want to make sure that that was on there. Now, I have two little tips for you, and then I would love to answer any questions for today. We might go over just a few minutes. I'm going to try to keep this, you know, just just under an hour and 15 minutes. This this actually saved my life as a signing agent. 
Okay, so I really want you to let this sink in. I know a lot of you double check your work and then you go, dang, I didn't, I, I checked it twice. And I found a way in my brain, okay, to make my double check work for me. And if you haven't trained with us at Notary Stars, here is a free tip that really changed my signing agency career. Stop looking for ink on the paper. Write it down because it doesn't work because there's ink all already all over the paper and you're just your computer your brain is a computer so it's just looking for more ink. You want to look for the elements of sign sign and date notarial certificate take a pause make sure it's filled out properly. When you're going through your double check look for the ink, uh, not the ink on the paper, but the action on the paper. Look for the signature look for the date when I do my double check it's like. It's like, I don't know if you guys can see me lifting the paper, but just pretend you can. It's like, okay, signature, sign and date, got it. Mm -hmm. I, I actually have that thought process in my brain. When I started doing that, I became a rock star notary. I really did. I don't know how, I'm, and it, I wish I could be a psychologist on that part. Like, I, I think I could make some money off of that one little tidbit right there because you, I realized I was just looking for ink and ink is already there. So my brain was missing what I was missing because it already saw ink and you, you know what I mean? But when you look for the process or the action on the paper, then you can catch it and it changed everything for me. So I really hope you guys will hear that and make sure you look for the action on the paper, not the ink on the paper. All right. And then the last thing is, um, you know, if you're a Notary Stars member, you can always call the Notary Support Line. We don't just do notarized documents. We do all documents in a loan package to help you. But I want to create the warning, and we had a good example of this, and that was not planted earlier, but this is the last thing on this sheet, and you'll see that it's, you know, typed out for you. I'm actually about to post this in there for everybody to download uh, in the chat. Um, but the very last thing on this page, that's free for everybody to download. Um, the very last thing on this page says, you know, to be, please be careful about Facebook University. You know, Notary Stars too has a Facebook group and we say you can converse with other notaries, but you'll notice we have a very, we have a lot of members and very little activity because Notary Stars actually come here and we train daily and we have a phone support line so they don't need the Facebook group as much. Facebook University can get you into a lot of trouble, okay? It's not that a lot of people don't mean well out there, okay? I'm sure a lot of people who answer questions mean well, but how I would answer a question for Miss Leah <clears throat> is going to be different than how she would answer a question for me because we're in different states. And Notary Stars takes this in consideration when you call in, where, is, where are you located? Where are the documents going back to? We take all of that in consideration. You take 50, 50 states on one notary question, and you try to mesh that in with seven different answers right away. And I see it all the time where notaries are giving slightly different answers or saying, I do it this way. Personal opinion will never be a great thing for you. So just be careful of Facebook University. If you're paying to be a part of a notary group, make sure that there are real trained mentors in that group actually answering your questions, not just other notaries. Um, and I'm sure all of you will reach your greatness one day, but I only take advice from notaries who've been in the industry longer than me. I just, they, you know, if they've made it over a decade, they've got my respect. If they have been here a year or two like me, or like some of you, I've been here for 10 years, but if they've been here a year or two just like you, they probably have just as many questions as you do. And I don't think I'm perfect by any means because I learn something new every single day at Unlimited Ink. Every single day. So I do not sit up here and preach and say that my mind is not still growing, but it's at least gotten to the point where I can help other people that are coming up behind me. And I will be the first if I don't know the answer. And you guys have been on the notary support line where I get Travis and Beth on the line at the same time to triple check me. You know, that's what real mentorship should be like. 
Okay, guys, I am done with that portion, but I'm going to start answering some of these questions. If you have any questions over anything that we've gone over, please raise that hand virtually, and we are going to start answering those questions as quickly as possible. Miss Nancy, you are up first. Thank you for patiently waiting. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I, and I now have a couple extra questions from originally. Um, on the Patriot Act, right? So because you had said before, you don't have to write notary public. So I just write notary signing agent. Should I put it in the public in there? I like to put notary public and signing agent on it. Okay. I'll add that to it then. No big deal. I, now I know that we can't copy military IDs. Does that include their VA IDs? Miss Beth? Yes, she's shaking her head. Yes. So don't copy those either. You, unless you're talking about their um, medical ID cards. Okay, so no, anything retired military, active military, any of those IDs that are issued by the US government, for military personnel, you cannot photocopy. Okay, but the ones that they get from the VA that has their picture on it when they go and get medical attention, I can copy that? That's a medical ID card. So yes, that's fine. That's not issued by the government. It's mm, indirectly issued by their medical facility. Just make okay. sure it doesn't have any of the uh, state or federal seals on. That'll tell you whether you can copy it or not. No Fed seals. Okay, yeah. perfect. And my last question, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. My last question on a letter of explanation, and I had this tonight actually, um, there was two signers, a husband and wife, and there were three different letters of explanation on there. Neither one of their names were printed on there, and there was one signature line and date. I had them both sign it. That, that's a really great question, and Beth, you can back me up on this if you'd like, but um, I've seen them for the wife and for the, the, the husband. Um, I usually ask them to read it and say, who does, which one of you does it pertain to? If they're both on the note, I usually have both of them sign it. If only one of them is on the note, then I only have the person it pertains to sign it. Okay, yeah, they were both on the note, so I said, you know, I'd rather you oversign than undersign, I suppose, so. Yeah. And it was late. I wasn't going to get anybody on the phone. So, okay. Just making sure I did right. Yeah. And for the letter of explanation, if it's a husband and wife and there's a, you know, they're both on the note, uh, you're not going to go wrong with having both of them sign it because it's just something they need for the file. It doesn't, it's not, you know, going to go through recording or, you know, all those things. So I don't think it would be any trouble. Okay. Perfect. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Nancy. Then, Mr. Anthony, uh, Andrew, you're up next. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Hey, good afternoon. Um, three questions. Um, could you reiterate in regards to the journal, you having them sign their signature? So you have John Doe Smith or J. John Doe Smith. On the driver's license, it says John Doe Smith. On the signature line, it says John D. Smith. And you have them sign in the journal, and it's let's say it's a scribbly, but it matches that scribbly on their driver's license. That's acceptable, right? As yeah, long absolutely. As they can match it throughout. Okay. I never ask somebody to change their signature. The only time that their signature can change is it, is if you can read it, and let's just say, oh, okay, let's just say that they sign their driver's license, John D, you know, whatever. On loan documents, they have to sign as they're listed. So if their middle name is spelled out and it's printed on that ID and you can legibly read their signature, then they have to write that middle name out or do the initial, however it's listed on the loan documents. This is my favorite signers are the ones with the squiggly lines. I love those because okay. I don't have to worry about it. Oh, I see a lot of hesitation right, right now. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, second question on the LOE, um, to piggyback off, off of what Nancy said, but little different there's no signature line it just says mary jane smith do you want them signing above their name or below the name it won't matter 
it won't um, matter. I mean, you want to follow standard etiquette. If it's, you can get a space in above, you want to do it above because that's above, how it's okay. been. But it won't matter really. All right. Fine, final question. This is in regards to the PCOR. Every once in a while, you get a PCOR. We all see them that there will be a check mark up above where they've selected. But if it's not selected, if we know what we're talking about, we understand that document, can we check mark and have them sign accordingly? Um, or do you that, recommend leaving a blank? I'm going to see what Miss Beth says about this, and then I'll tell right. you what I think. Wait, I'm sorry. I was reading chat. What did you say? Um, on the PCOR, it's a, usually like right around the top, or they're going to select what's the purpose of the PCOR, whether it's section A, B, C, D, or whatever, yes or no. Some of them sometimes are checked, but then a lot of them are not. If we know what we're talking about, we understand that document, can we check for them as we've explained it? No. I'm, them, whatever, and or just leave a blank and just let them sign. I, you mean they're asking or they're not? Mm, you need to direct them to choose yes or no. If there are yes or no questions, Andrew, they need to choose one or the other all the way down through there. So not your check mark. It either applies or it doesn't on the PCOR, right? Correct. So if they go down through there and they haven't answered yes or no to all the questions, as the signing agent, you need to say, all right, um, Joel, um, number seven, 10, and 13 need for you to do a check mark, need for you to answer yes or no on there. Right. So if it's a yes or no answer, there has to be something there. If it is just put a check mark, if it applies, you're going to have lines that don't have a check mark on it. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> okay. If it's a yes or no check mark, they have to choose yes or no on all the questions. No way to get around okay. it. I so, wouldn't so be answering it for them. So, okay, maybe, all right. Yeah, there's a long list of yes or no answers, but okay. at, the, at the very top, is this between spouses? Is this between a spouse and a child? Mm -hmm. Sometimes those are checkmarked. Sometimes those are not. What I'm asking is if it's not, can we have them just sign and not put a check mark? Or do you recommend us getting a check mark if it's blank um you know i'd have to look at that on an individual basis i gotta have oh. a document in front of me so i can okay okay definitively i actually but, actually put one on the screen uh there you go. okay there you go so I'm, I'm glad that this question come up so i, I miss beth you mind if i take it from here um sure. okay so this document is not notarized okay so with it not being notarized, you know, maybe they want you to capture the information, but you are stepping out of your lines as a signing agent to check any boxes for the signers if they don't know, okay? Especially on a non-notarized document. So if you can guide them to where they can go, oh yeah, that's the right answer. Sure, that's very helpful. If they don't know the answer, do not push them. You have title go over that with them and title can put the check mark there for them you can okay. you can explain the best that you can but you really don't want to overstep your boundary okay if it's a notarized document you know you have to have that document completed to do your notarial certificate on a non-notarized document they really should be going over that with them and that's something that's with the title agency and the lender that they need they can fill that out with them you can capture the signature and you can put it on them to fill it out for them okay so Andrew, we do have a download um, on a script for that document, and it does go through each of those questions, and it kind of explains, gives you a script explanation that you can use as a notary to stay in your lane. Right, right, right. That they can complete those blanks. 99.99% .99 of the time, I'm in my lane, and I just, I have them sign. <laughs> I, I, I know, I... 
those first three to four questions, it's going to be right, right within there. But I stay in my lane and I just, here you go, sign here. I just, I just wondered about that form as all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you have any more questions, Mr. Anthony? All no, right. I'm done. Thank okay. you. I'm done. All right. Uh, we have two more questions up for today. Uh, the next one's coming from Mr. Joel. There we go. Uh, I just have a simple one. <clears throat> I have a, a brother multifunction uh, printer scanner and it has, you know, the two trays for letter and legal. And so when I do scans, my scanner uh, input tray lets me put about 75 pages in there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, then I push the button and if I have mixed uh, sizes of paper, I just do everything in legal and scan it that way. Um, and so sometimes if I have a big file with like <clears throat> 200 pages, like with a VA loan of some kind, um, 200 pages, I'll, I'll do three separate scans uh, so that it doesn't become too unwieldy. And then when I upload them, I'll say, you know, the Smith uh, sign docs, one of three, two of three, and three of three. And when you were talking about merging the PDFs is, you, you know, I think you, you mentioned, what was it, 25 megabytes or 30 megabytes max? Yep. So, so um, you know, some of these files, and I always scan at 300 DPI, um, and uh, I'm just wondering whether I should learn how to combine the PDFs into one big file or just keep doing it the way I've been doing it. You can learn it. And in fact, we have it under the tech section of Notary Stars. Travis spent a really good uh, time making a lot of those tech videos for us. And it teaches you how to combine those PDFs and reduce the size. Joel, okay. can I ask you a quick question? Did you say you had a brother scanner? Yes. Okay. So brother scanners, if you're using the brother scanner software and not your Windows software, it gives right. you a tiny little button in the upper left-hand corner to add pages. So when you're scanning at 300 DPI and you only have room for 75 pages out of 150 pages you have to break it up into two packages to put it in your feeder at 300 dpi you should be able to have um you're going to scan those first 75 go to your screen click add more pages scan the second 75 pages and then when it finishes it's going to combine it into one pdf if you reduce that in Adobe twice, you'll get to 25 megabytes on a standard 150 page package at 300 DPI. Well, so you, don't have to uh, you know, the, the, the way I usually do these scans is I just use the little, um, you know, the screen. I have an LCD color little touch screen and that's how I do the scans. I don't actually do it from my laptop. So maybe I need to learn how to do it from my laptop instead. Um, um, Epson also has a desktop app as well, don't they, Ronnie? Yes. And you know, I have to tell you, Mr. Joel, I am guilty of the same boat you're in. I actually didn't know until after I bought the Epson that I could do that on the brother. And I was like, man, I would, you know, I, I hated that I spent all this money on a scanner. And then somebody showed me like, you can do that too. Um, but I had already fell in love with the Epson. So you can do that if you're using the desktop app um, or the application that comes with it to add more pages. Um, and Beth has one sitting right by uh, two of them sitting behind her. So I know I she, saw that. I know I she knows that. what she's talking one about. One of the reasons why I asked the question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Travis goes over that in those videos under the market, uh, the, the notary tech um okay. under the training journey so if you just click on notary tech he's done some beautiful training videos for you guys um and it'll go over scanning and merging and all of those things and reducing file size as well okay great thank you thank That's you it. i'm seeing the business pick up yay yay um 
we are actually going to be we, we were just talking about it today in the meeting with Travis that we're going to try to put this document and as well as um, a lot of the merging and uh, those things like little short videos in our order so if notaries need help when they have our order they'll have like quick little links um, so that that's coming too so if you have a order from unlimited Inc., you'll probably have that training in there in the, the link as well that's great thanks Ryan thank you and then our last question from night tonight is from one, also from one of our long timers Mr Maurice Ronnie how you doing good how are you doing all right um, I was down at the convention this weekend in Wilmington, and when I saw notary stars in the ad, I was like, "Oh my God!" So it was it was uh, it was nice seeing us in that ad, ad down there. And when they you know it was announcing who the sponsors were, and and they like notary stars, and I'm like, "Woo!" -woo! <laughs> so uh, it was really nice though to uh, be a part of notary stars and see that you know um, we're all over. Yes, and you know we've actually with our uh, uh, thank you for pointing that out with our initiative this year with Notary Stars Unlimited is to get all notaries to join a reputable state group. And so what we're doing is we're kind of trying to interview all of these groups, find out what they're about, bring them in, let us know what's going on in their state so we can learn from state to state. But then we're also turning around and sponsoring each group, um, you know, within reason to kind of give back to each state's group. Uh, and we're also encouraging notaries to formulate their own group, like in Arizona. And I know there's another one coming, which I won't mention, but um, they they they're almost getting ready to go we're trying to encourage notaries to become a part of those groups so i'm glad that you were able to see our our name there and and uh i'm glad that you know that they are you know putting us into circulation with them as well uh though when you see it in a state group like that though that is completely selfless on our part we really want to help those groups and you being a part of that group find that group Right. And the only thing that I didn't uh, really like is that they're not doing Ron in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. They're calling theirs Ren, but some odd reason, I don't know. But they're only going to do the United States and you cannot do go outside the United States and it won't be ready. Uh, the actual launch date was supposed to be July 1st, but they say it's going to be 2024 now. Yeah. And, you know, that's another part of Notary Stars un un init Unlimited initiative this year is to teach you guys how to write those letters to your lawmakers. Uh, our last session, we actually uh, went over how to write letters to lawmakers to you know speed things up or slow things down uh, or get things changed. So I hope you'll watch that uh, you know that series, especially the one where we had North Carolina in, uh, but also um, learn how to write those letters. I'm still learning to write them myself. You know, it's not something you ever think you're going to do in your life is to write letters to lawmakers, but as business owners, it becomes a big part of your life. Just want to make sure that was all your questions. Yeah, that, that's it. That's it, Ronnie. All right. Good to see you here tonight. All right, guys. Um, I really appreciate you spending uh, the better part of an hour and 15 minutes with me. Can you believe I, of all people, got something done in an hour and 15 minutes? I am notorious for going for hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes. But... I would like to ask all of you to please turn on your cameras and let's, let's do our signature wave before we leave. If you are not stuffing your face or you are not naked, please take a moment to turn on your camera and wave to yourself, wave to another notary, wave to those future notaries, wave to those who couldn't be here tonight. And Miss Beth, how do we really say it here at Notary Stars? As you go along your journey, please just remember we're all in the same storm not in the same boat. Some of us have yachts, some of us have canoes, and some of us are really dog paddling. Just remember um, to be kind and reach back, grab the hand of that notary next to you or behind you and show them the way. Bring them, bring them along with you. Thanks everybody and have a wonderful evening. Yeah.